We're going to get started about why you need health care and of course health care is a big issue and a big expense for everyone in New Jersey and in our country today. So why buy health care? Well your business and your property are valuable and there are many times that we have people that will actually have um, bankruptcy due to medical ma medical uh, medical expenses and if you have assets you have a farm you have a business they can go after that business so it is important that you do protect yourself with health care insurance uh, there are many plan options as I'm sure most of you are familiar with um, you've heard the HMOs the HSAs the POS um, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail with those particulars because I want to give you more information on Obamacare or the, um, the health care reform that's going on today. So you can purchase insurance through a, an individual, a small group, which would be two or more full-time employees on your farm, or a large group. Uh, there's a lot of health care providers in New Jersey. These are just some of them. We have Aetna, United Healthcare, AmeriHealth, and the Blues. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with these, these names. Uh, in healthcare, there's a lot of terminology uh, that you, I'm sure, have also heard. Um, everybody's probably pretty m familiar with deductibles and how you have to reach a deductible and your out-of-pocket maximums and your uh, co-pays. So when you're searching for a healthcare insurance, I always recommend look at that out-of-pocket maximum figure. That is the worst case scenario. If something were to happen to you or you had a serious illness, that is your out-of-pocket maximum that you'd have to pay for that calendar year. So what could you afford to lose? Is it 5,000? Is it 8,000? Is it 10,000? So look at those figures for the out-of-pocket maximum. Some plans re uh, require referrals. Some are just um, you can go to a specialist if you want without a referral. So it depends on your, your plan and what you choose. When you do have a problem, if you have, for instance, if you have a health care problem with your heart, you want to go to a specialist that deals strictly with health, health issues with the heart. Um, so you want to find a good specialist. You can go on the web, of course, today and find a lot of referrals. You can ask your friends and there's a lot of information out there uh, from your insurance carrier on these specific specialists. When you go to a doctor visit, we all get nervous and we are kind of afraid of, you know, what, what the doctor's going to say or what are they going to find out. So I suggest make some notes before you go to the doctor. Have that in your purse or in your pocket and take that in with your exam. And of course, there's a lot of, like we just talked about, the research that you can do on your own. And you want to ask, you know, if this particular doctor is doing a procedure, how many have they done? Are they brand new uh, into the, uh, the profession or have they been around a while? Uh, emergency care. A lot of people feel and think that if you have an in-network doctor or an in-network hospital, that they're the only ones you can go to. If you were visiting someone in Maine and you certainly uh, fell down and you broke your ankle, well, your health care provider-only network is in New Jersey. You can go to an emergency room, obviously, and be considered in that work because that is a specific emergency that you need immediate assistance for. So that should be billed to you as an in-network um, bill, not out of network. So people, some people are afraid that when they go away, they're not going to have insurance coverage where they're going away. But any time there's an actual emergency, they must see you and they must treat that as in-network. Um, there's always uh, health care uh, hotlines that you can call. If you're on the weekend and your doctor's not opened um, and you're really don't, not sure, should I run to the emergency room? Well, an emergency room visit is going to cost you three times at least what a doctor visit would, would cost you. So you want to try to avoid the emergency room unless, of course, it's a light, life threatening disease or you know something that you need 18 stitches on because you know you fell down and you hit a hoe in, in, in the field so you know those are the things you have to use common sense about and obviously we do have an over um, abundance of people using the ER as their primary care and that's part of our problem here in America with our health care expenses 
Um, most plans will have an RX. A lot of plans now are having a drug discount card or an RX card uh, as a standalone, not included with their policy. So you may have an Aetna Healthcare card for your hospitalization and your doctor, but you may have you know, a discount card from a Medco or an, another company that just does RX. So that is becoming more and more of a cost saving to some people. So you have to look at those options as well. Uh, preventive and wellness care. Um, obviously, you know your body more than anybody else. You know when something's not right. So we urge you to be in control of your own health. Go and get your annual physical exam. Um, at this point, all of your wellness and preventive care in America is covered at 100% if you have a health care plan today. Um, so you can go and get your annual physical exam done, and it would be a zero cost. So take Same advantage way. of that. Know your, your numbers. Know what your blood um, uh, pressure is. You know, try to, to be aware of those numbers and your cholesterol numbers. All that's important. Okay. This is um, really what I wanted to um, spend some more time on today is the overview of healthcare in America and with our healthcare reform so that you guys know what's happening out there. And it changes daily. I mean, we're still working through the process. Um, the Healthcare Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, as it's called, started in 2012, and some of those uh, things are already in place. The lifetime limits have been removed, which means prior to 2012, uh, Aetna could have a plan that says, okay, you have a million dollars um, and that's your lifetime max on that, pro on that uh, program. Today there are no lifetime caps, so those limits have been removed. Your dependent to age 26 has now been put into place. So if you have uh, a child and they are not a full-time student and they're still um, without health care insurance, they don't have it offered by their employer, you can still have them under your health care plan. Pre-existing conditions were removed from children uh, under the age of 19. So any pre-ex, that used to be a problem with our children. They weren't able to get insured because they already had diabetes or they already had a health care issue. If they lost their insurance, nobody wanted to pick them up again. So those pre-existing com conditions have been removed for children under 19. In January 2014, next January, that will relate to everyone in America. There are no pre-ex exclusions, okay? Um, some more things that are in place now. We talked about our women's health, your well visits with your gynecology. Um, you can go and have your annual physical exam, and contraception is now included as 100% um, coverage and being paid. Uh, the choice of your provider for family care. A lot of women don't want just to go to your regular GP. You can now choose your OBGYN to be your primary care physician. So that's also new. And the indoor tanning tax that has been put into place. So if these girls are going and get tanning for the prom, they're going to be taxed on it and that tax is going towards this health care reform. We know that it's not good and they're still able to do that. So they did put a tax on the indoor tanning. So from now until 2014, we have a ways to go, um, but there's things happening all the time. Uh, as you may know, or you may have read, Governor Christie here in New Jersey has opted out not to do a state exchange here in New Jersey, which means we're not going to be in the business of selling health care as a state. We opted to go with the federal plans. Um, every state had to have something in place and uh, we opted not to do that. It's a huge undertaking and just like everything else in New Jersey, um, our mandates here are much stricter than a lot of other states. So when a healthcare carrier comes in to New Jersey to sell healthcare, they're mandated to have certain things covered. Well, here in New Jersey, we have a lot of more certain things covered than say Iowa or down in Florida. So a lot of uh, the carriers don't even want to come to New Jersey to sell, but that's one of the reasons we too are higher here in the Northeast. Our cost of medical care is higher. Um, the W-2 reporting. Uh, if you are an employer of 250 or more employees, you have to start putting on the W-2 the cost of your health care insurance that you paid for that employee. 
what do you think that's going to amount to? Going to start getting taxed on that, most likely. There is also a new fees um, that you're going to see. And if they haven't already started, they're going to be started by t January 2014. It's called a Patient-Centered Outcome Research Institute fee. And that's $1 per member. So everybody in America is going to be charged a dollar per member. So if you have a family of four, you're going to be charged $4 a year to go to that fee. And then in 2014, it's going to go up to $2 per member. And then in 2015, it's going to be adjusted. So that's continually going to move. Just another fee that's going to be added to your health care premiums. Um, there's going to be no more 90-day wait for employers, no more than a 90-day wait for employers to put you on health care. So as a farmer and, you know, being just a family business, you would be eligible to go to the marketplace and shop for insurance. So uh, if an employer has 50 or more employees, they must offer health care that the employees can afford. Okay, that's another thing. What's affordable? If there's a calculation and everything. So in New Jersey, again, we're very high, so it's going to be uh, a challenge to our employers. So there are penalties involved if you do not cover your employees. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of our farmers that call into Farm Bureau and they have seasonal, seasonal, seasonality labor, um, of, they may have 500 uh, workers coming in and picking vegetables for the summer. Um, or they may have, uh, you know, the blueberry farmers may have two months of intense uh, workers in there. There's a full-time equivalent uh, calculation that these farmers have to do, and if they equal a full-time equivalent, then they have to be covered with health care. So you can be either charged a $2,000 penalty for the first 30 employees that you don't cover. Okay, $2,000 is cheap compared to 10000 So are we going to pay or play? Are our farmers going to be paying that penalty and just forgetting about covering, you know, the healthcare people, we don't know. We don't know where it's going. Um, it's a, it's a big uh, issue here in in America and here in New Jersey for us to to consider.